Welcome to Adobe Enclave, um, a place of uh, knowledge pack and how you test that information in your Enclave. Um, today, I wanted to do a quick video on um, some of the questions that may be just free. Just if you know it, you know it, an easy bonus question, you should not let, you should not let it go away. Just a quick um, topic on the EKG monitors and heart murmurs and the allocation, where to find them. So let's go ahead, get to it. And so, um, as you can see on the left side, we have different kind of um, heart sounds, where to look for them. We have the aortic, we have the pulmonic, uh, we have the hip point, um, a cuspid sound, and a mattress sound. And this is the chest wall. Um, did a little bit of anatomy. So here is what we call the sternum. The sternum is here. So S means sternum. This M, this is the manubrium. Manubrium of the chest wall. And these are the ribs. And you can see this is the clavicle. The clavicle is here. And your azilla, that is mean that your hand pit, so your hand goes like that. It will be somewhere here, going down here, like that. And these are the ribs. What you also have to know is to how to count the spaces. You can see the manubrium. Okay, the first rib is that one. This is the first rib. So this is one. This is two because you see this is the manubrium and it comes. So when they give you a picture, just be careful. This is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to rip. Okay. And then the spaces, the spaces is this the first space is the one between one and two. So that's I don't know if you can see it, uh, maybe what color green. So this is the first space between one and two. Two and three is the second space. Then this will be third, this will be four, this will be five. So that's our um, you can name them and answer any question on the location of them. So sometimes they want you to and listen to the aortic um, mama or pulmonic mama or somebody have a tricuspid mama or macho mama. Um, basically, where they will ask you, where do you put a stethoscope to listen? So I have a mnemonic. Um, but you have to start from one place. So we'll clean this first. So the first one you have to, the, the, your, your first one, if you're able to find the first one, which is the second intercostal space, this side, second intercostal space. This is the second, okay? So this is also the second, and the third is here, and the fourth, and the fifth. The, the first one is always the A. So you start from the A and you have to start from the right. Start from the right and the A. So this is the A. So I'll put it here. A, that's the aortic sound. That's where you can listen to. Then when you cross over right away, you go to the P, pulmonic sound. The third space is the hips. It look like three, but three in the other way around. So that's the hips point. And then you go, you skip the four and you go to five. And that is the tricuspid. A little bit, not too close, but coming down here, I'll just put it here like that, not too close to the sternal border. And then the five and the, um, the other, um, macho is the same thing, but it's displaced a little bit down here. So that's it. So if you look at it, it look like, like pet. This going down. So pet, vertical is pet. 
And then when you go down again, it's ATM, diagonal, it's ATM. So if you draw it and you don't see that view, it's ATM. So this is pet vertical, and this is ATM on the same side. So you need money to buy a pet, but it doesn't matter. Just the, if you draw it, it's like that. They, 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 what they're going to ask you is the actual location. So as you can see, if you draw it, you can rewrite it in your own words. That's some of the um, um, questions that are usually content and straightforward. They want you to re rewrite it question in your own words. So we are the aortic sound is on the second space, right? It's on the second. So it's what? Second, let me use the red. Second, okay, which space? Intercostal, so ICS. Where is it? This is your left side because that's where your heart is. This is your right. So that this is also the problem. People get confused. When you're facing a, an anatomical image, okay, the left side is opposite your right. So when you're facing it, uh, the left side of the patient is your right side. So this, we're facing this anatomical image. So this is our left, this is the left side of the patient, but this is our right side. And this is our uh, right side of the patient, this is our left side. So it's in the second intercostal space, right? On, on which side? On the right of the patient. It's always towards the patient, right? Of what? This is the sternum, right at the sternal border. So SB, sternal border. So, so that's the location. Then you cross over straight, you just cross over from your ATM to go by the pet. And it's also what? Second intercostal space. But since you've crossed over, you're on the patient left and it's just right of the sternal border. Then you go down as you go get the, the pet. Pet intercostal space, okay. It's on the left of the sternal border. And then you skip the fourth, okay? And you go to the fifth, fifth intercostal space. But you see, it's not right at the sternal border. I move towards here a little bit. So just lateral to the left, still left sternal border. And the last one, the matro valve, is also on the same side. You see how it slants? That's the, where your heart starts to go down and turn around. It's the same thing, fifth intercostal space. But this line is on the clavicle. If you draw a line straight from the clavicle, it will be right in the middle. It has to be mid-clavicle, so MCL. Okay, so that's all the heart sound. Um, um, the location of the mammal. So A, and if you can see, you can see this is the ATM like that and the pet going. So A, P, E, T, skipping the fourth intercostal space and sitting on the four and fifth intercostal space. And then this is what confused people. The fifth is in the, um, the macho vibe is in the mid clavicular, right in the middle. Okay, right in the middle of the clavicle. That point is very important. So the fifth intercostal space is where you can find the apex of the heart. So if they ask you to, where would you listen at the apex of the heart or feel it, it's the same thing as the macho valve um, sound uh, for a moment. So fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line, okay? On the mid clavicular line on the left side, okay? It's still left side, left mid clavicular line. Is the same as the uh, an ape and uh, the maximum and uh, in point of the heart. It's the same thing. That's where you can you can find it from there. So that's where you you find it. So that's how you can remember this um simple thing that is usually free but um easy question. Don't let it get away from you. So pet and ATM second the cost of space and so if you're able to normal it's easy you just take your time and normal and you'll be fine 
the the one area I just want to add to this is the something they call angle of low low weights or what angle of yeah angle of Louis. I guess it's French word. I use always say Louis. So angle of Louis. And then that is this is the manubrium. I told you this is the manubrium and this is the sternum. It's this joint. That is the joint where they meet. It's the angle of if they ask you to show it on a diagram, that is the angle of Louis. Don't memorize it. It's the connection between the matter, the manubrium and the sternum together. Okay. Then this is also something they can ask you, the phlebostatic axis based on the location we know. This is very important when you are you 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 have an A-line, okay? So you have an A-line. So A-line arterial line or you're checking your patient blood pressure. This is very important point of the chest. So patient lay flat and then you 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 locate the fifth, fourth intercostal space. I've shown you. You count and then you locate the fourth intercostal space, right? Then you draw a line. So if this is the clavicle, you draw a line from the clavicle straight down. And this is the chest. So this is the back of the chest and this is the front of the chest. You should also draw a line through the midline from the chest all the way across the, the clavicle line. So this is the clavicle and this is the line going across the chest. And then you measure from the, the sternum to the back and the halfway, halfway of that point where this meet, this line meet is the fibroblastic point. And it's at the fourth intercostal space. You have to know it. Fourth intercostal space between the mid, mid axillary or mid clavicular line and the, um, the AP diameter. So AP diameter is from the anterior posterior. So the halfway between the, across the chest like that, and then right at the mid axillary line, right where the axilla is, is off a little bit from the clavicle I may have spoke. So axillary line right in the middle, is where you have the fibrostatic point. So fourth intercostal space, mid axillary line, AP diameter, where they all connect together is where they, so it will be fourth intercostal space at mid axillary line with the intersection of the anterior posterior diameter of the chest. Why is this important? Well, this is where you zero um, your A line. If you don't zero your A line, it will give you wrong reading all the time. Or you have a CVP line, like central venous pressure line. Um, and then they usually the, the machine, the A line, we have a stop cock. So the stop cock is where you leave the stop cock lining up with the uh, fibroplastic axis. Ax Why is it important? Well, if it's below this line, so if you if you put the, um, the, the A line below this line, so if it's below the line, okay, what is going to happen? You're going to have a force, falsely elevated bra pressure. So it's below falsely elevated numbers reading because you are below the line. So if below it, falsely elevated. When you below it, the numbers goes up. And when you are above it, Falsely, falsely uh, decrease numbers. So when you go above the fibrostatic axis, your blood pressure reading, oil line reading will be lower, okay? If you go below the fibroblastic axis, your blood pressure reading will be high. So if a patient comes in to you in clinic and you're going to measure their blood pressure, this is why you make sure you line up with the blood pressure machine, but I know most people don't do it. Um, you want to line it up at the fibrostatic 
point. You hold your hand so that you're lining it with the blood pressure cuff and everything. So that it's lined up at that and you get a good breath pressure. If the hand is lower down below that and you're reading lower, you're reading here. And therefore you have elevated, um, forcefully elevated blood pressure. If you put raise the hand too high above that line, the blood pressure is low falsely. So that is very important. It's a testable area to know, phlebostatic point. Fourth intercostal space, mid uh, axillary line, and the AP diameter of the chest. Now, 12 lead EKG. They can ask you this. They like that because you'll be putting EKG on all the time. Key point. It's misnormal, okay? 12 lead EKG, you have to know that you don't have 12 leads. It's always a misnomer. It's wrong. You have what? 10. 10 leads. This is a key fact. You have to, you only have 10 leads. Four on the limbs and the six on the pre -corda. That means the chest, pre-corridor leads. So these are four leads. So these are facts you have to know. 12 lead EKG, that means, doesn't mean you place 12 uh, leads on them. It's only 10. 10, uh, four on the limbs. Limbs means they are upper extremities and the lower extremities. And then the, the other six is on the pre area. How do you, what is the best way to remember them? is there's an acronym for that. So um, some of the nurses, they say it all the time. So so once again, this is the patient left and then this patient right. So this is the arm, it's the extremities. So this will be, this will be left upper extremities. This will be left right upper extremities. This will be right lower extremities and this will be left lower extremities right so that is the extremities how do you remember it i use wrong color but they always say i hear them say that well um on the right side okay on the right side um they start from the lower portion which is easy okay so here on the right lower there is green 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 grass so you have a, your green grass here what is above the green grass well there's cloud so it's white so you have white here i don't know I, I can, the, the white color won't show yet but here it's white so i'll put i'll put some color here so this is white so white on the right upper extremity uh, right upper extremity on the yes and then on the right lower, you have the green. So cloud above the gra uh, uh, grass, okay? Then when you go to the left side, okay, you start with the lower all the time. So there's fire here. So fire is red, spleen is there. So that's another way to remember that your liver is, your liver is here and your spleen, this is spleen. Spleen, blood goes there. And then the liver is where you have bar. So you have a bunch of bile here. So that's why it drained there. And the spleen is all it cares about, filter the blood. And so here is fire, red. Oh, red, fire. But when you have fire, what comes, comes out is smoke, so black. So you put a, um, the smoke over the fire. So this is black. You have to know the lead. These leads are very important. This is what they, they ask you. I don't think they ask the pre -quarter. The pre is difficult, but this one is straightforward. So smoke over the fire. So there's smoke here on the left side. Over the fire, which is where they explain it. And the liver, which is bile, you have clouds above the liver. So white over um, the green. And that's how you can remember it. There's four leads. 
and then the the and this is so we use this for a monitor so i guess I, I did not make it clear there's one more you put on the monitor is here so the v side though so this is the poop so there is a um brown color here so this is what when a patient come to you and you're placing them on the on a monitor um you take the ekg leads and you divide it into five you just give them five leads five leads only five leads so this is for just the monitor not the full ekg so you divide and i told you the ekg at 10 leads if you just do putting them on a monitor you do five and so white on the right upper extremities, green on the right lower, black on the left upper, and then and red on the left lower. But then you need one more. You put it on the V, that is the or the precorder. You only put one precorder lead, and it's the poop, which is brown. So your, your poop is brown. So white over the uh, grass, smoke over the fire and then you have a poop so the poop is brown that's the v one v so this is the monitor and that's how to remember it quick tips for monitors now then you got to deal with the this is the the hard one now you have to deal with the pre so this is the six we now we if you have to do the full 10 EKG leads, you have to do the full. So you have your right upper, which you put white, right lower, which you, you put the green. You have the left upper, which you put the uh, black, and the left lower, which we, you put the red. Okay, so we have black here. We have we have red here. We have green here. And then let's assume we have maybe I'll put this as white. Because we're doing full EKG, full EKG, which we need 10 leads, we take the poop out from the monitor. That's the brown and replace it with extra six leads. So the pre-quarter leads, there's six of them. They are all on the chest. And they're a little bit difficult. And you so, but you already know you count the space. You start from the fourth intercostal space. So one, two, three, four. So this one you start from here. Fourth intercostal space. And so you put a V1 here. V1. Is V1 is like your um and the A. So you start that's number one. V1 is the fourth intercostal space. So V1 is fourth intercostal space. Is on the right of the sternal border. So that's the one. And then you cross like you did with the a a AP. You cross and you go to V2. The same thing. V2 is fourth intercostal space, but it's on the left side of the sternal border. So this is what the, then the next one is what confuses, but it's the easiest one. So we count one, two, three, four. The next one is the fifth. You go to the fifth intercostal space, okay? Fifth in the intercostal space, but you skip. You don't go back here. So remember, in the first one, the the um the heart sound, the the uh what the um the mama when you cross over, you don't go back in it again. So this one, you cross over, you go down. We're going to the fifth intercostal space. So fifth. So this is where we put V four. So we put V four here fifth intercostal space at mid clavicle. So you draw a line from the clavicle and you stay here. So that's the V4. 
You see, I, I, I skip V3. There's a reason why. V4 is fifth intercostal space. Is on the left side, okay? On mid clavicle line. So right in the middle of a clavicle, you put that. Then from uh, V4, you go to V6, okay? You go to V6. So you go to V6, but V6 move away from the V4, but they are on the same level. They are on the fifth intercostal space on the left side, but it's the mid axilla because this is the axilla, the armpit. So you start going there. So this is a V6. Mid in, right in the middle of the axilla. So it's V6. So V6 is fifth intercostal space on the left side. Instead of the mid clavicle, it's axilla. So you're moving laterally from the clavicle to the axillary line. Then you go, that's when you go to the V5 finally. So V5 will be here and it will be anterior lateral line. So this is V5, fifth intercostal space, the same line. Left anterior lateral line. So you're going backward as if you're going to towards their back because of the apex of the heart. So we have V1, V2, then we went to V4, we went to V6, and then we, we went to V5. So what happened to V3? V3, you don't have to think. Just put it in between the V2 and V4. So right here. So this is where the V3, but they are on the same line um, between the V, V uh, of the same line of the V4 and V5. So you put it there. So they cross over like that. So that's it. So V1, once again, fourth intercostal space on the right side, sternum. Then you cross over, you go to V2, fourth intercostal space on the, but on the left side of the sternal border. You skip one, okay, which is V3, and uh, move laterally, and you go to V4. So fifth intercostal space, but uh, you don't you skip the line, but you don't skip the space. Fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line. Then you go to V6. Fifth intercostal space at the mid axillary line. Then you sh start sh shifting. That's V6. Then V5 become behind because of the way the heart is shaped. Fifth intercostal space at anterior axillary line. Then you come back and go into the fifth intercostal space and put the V3 in between them. And that's the, the way um, to remember them. So this is the quick EKG, um, something that they can ask you, location. Um, remember, you only have 10 leads in 12 EKG. Once again, take care of yourself and keep charging.